Everyone, welcome to the latest Chainvites webinar uh, in our series of how to operate and a successful Bitcoin ATM business. Today, we're going to talk about what we call guerrilla marketing for Bitcoin ATM businesses. So we're going to go through all the elements of, of marketing of your Bitcoin ATMs. Um, these are proven tactics that we've you know, we've seen other people use and things things that work well. And so what we'll do is we'll try to we'll narrow our approach or sort of take a uh, uh, we'll look at it from the machine level first, and then we'll kind of extend out from there. So, so we'll start with uh, some of the important factors of you have a you, you purchase a machine. We're going to look at locating it, and then how to how to uh, put it in the environment in such a way that it that it draws attention. So, you want to kick that off? I'll I'll, I'll kick that over to Eric. Where, where's the starting with the machine? What's what's the best place to 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 locate the machine for attention to help it to help us mar with marketing? So, I mean, starting with the machine wrapping them, that's certainly, you want to you want to present it in a way that people notice it. Um, some of them have top screens, so you can put things onto the top screen that'll attract people to the screen. You can certainly wrap them like this, or, or they look like this, um, but, but they stand out and people, people so, notice them. So, so when you wrap them, you're basically, you, you're creating a design that, that like an, an, usually like an automobile wrapping service would come or sign company. Well, that's what this is. Yeah, exactly. That's it's 3M. Um, so yeah, a lot of people ask where you can get them. I was like, just Google 3M network and all of those people do wraps on cars. They can do this. They just wrap, do the measurements, whatever design that you want to come up with. And, and they put it on there. We have designs that we give to people if they want to have like a template and then they just Oh, okay. So basically, you know, you got the big, you can see that you, you get the Bitcoin sign there. So people notice that, especially people that are in the space. Um, and yeah, so then it says buy and, buy and sell Bitcoin. Now, relative to location, when you look at where people put these machines in, in, in locations at there, because we'll talk about different locations, um, like what's the typically, you know, guidance on a good place to put a machine? Well, we tell people the same, the same place that you would put a, um, um, sometime, um, Sorry about that, James. Next to the ATM machine, right? So you've already thought out where to put the ATM machine. It's usually in a safe location, sort of private. Putting it next to there, typically people come in and take cash out of the ATM machine anyway, so it makes sense to be next to there. Um, plus, the people using the ATM machine are going to certainly see this machine sitting next to it. So that's that's typically where we want to put them in the stores. Almost always, we put them next to the to the ATM okay. machine. Okay, and then the machines that we have have one one option that's available is called a top screen. I mean, Keith, you want to take that? We'll talk about what top screen is and how, how they work for marketing. Yeah, so most people think that they're going to market, you know, like uh, slushies or, you know, uh, t-shirts, whatever, you know, something. They think that they're going to sell off that marketing spot in, in the top screen. But okay. what works best is actually selling Bitcoin <laughs> because you're selling Bitcoin from your ATM. You want to market Bitcoin. So what operators will do is they'll put on the top screen a slideshow that says, you know, best Bitcoin ATM in town, buy Bitcoin here. You know, this is Bitcoin country and stuff like that. So it catches people's eyes. That top screen makes the, the machine taller, too. It's about this much taller. And so it stands out from other machines and it, it catches people's eyes. OK, now, do you, do you see people sometimes using that? that top screen to help people understand how to buy Bitcoin? Is it going to instructional piece or is yeah. it, is it or both, both yeah, for marketing have, and instruction? We have like default explainer type uh, uh, graphics that people use. They'll put their logo on it, but it'll step-by-step. Step, here's how to buy. Here's how to sell uh, people that don't put top screens on it. So we have these like, uh, you know, hard coded banners that go in the back and, and they describe, you know, not to get scammed. Here's how you buy. Here's how you sell. Mm -hmm. Have any questions? Here's customer support. Um, so, so that's, that's the important thing is when people come up to the machine, you have brochures. That's another important thing is have something that somebody can take away and not feel, um, you know, people are intimidated using new things. So um, it, it's, it's helpful if you have something explaining step by step. Better yet would be something they can go read and come back with or even online. Um, okay. So. Okay, so and now like, and like Keith has said, I just want to a lot of people think they want to put some kind of advertising on that top screen. And I just laugh as like, why would you do that? You have the most important real estate in the entire store. That is that everyone's going to see that. Why would you want to give that up to candy bars? You're, right. You know, you get one order on your machine <laughs> is more money than you're going to get in whatever kind of advertising you think you're going to sell in there. So just sell what you're selling, which is the machine and attract people to it. So, oh, okay. Now, so, people, so when you talk yeah, about it, everyone Bruce, thinks, oh, I'll make a couple extra hundred bucks, but no. that's, that's the old world <laughs> ATM thinking where that's all you're making every month. And that's not what you're doing here. Oh, okay. Now you mentioned a brochure. So 
what what typically do you what kind of things do you put in the brochure i'm, I'm assuming how to buy how to use the machine or what what, what kind of things do you include in, in a brochure just that <laughs> so uh yeah uh it's, it depends and, and other locations we, we 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 put our other locations in case of the machine um you know they want to they find one closer to their house or yeah okay so you're showing them how to use it you're talking about bitcoin um do you i mean do you mention anything about like how to use the wallet the whole just how they connect with the machine basically some, some operators do some operators have like you know where to download a wallet we, we explain um, how to set up a wallet okay yeah okay and, and it, the, the also what is bitcoin you know and they'll have like a paragraph just describing bitcoin in there so it, it really depends everybody's got their own way of they're going to advertise um but brochures are definitely handy you can get one of those little sticky uh brochure holders and just okay. put it right by the atm and then people just take brochures right out of it okay so the, but you'd also list yeah, your it, other it, other it, machines and locations so there'd be directions to get to, to find that's them. primarily what we do we, we have we have a list of other locations nearby that they can go to. Again, people don't even realize some of our machines are closer. They're like, oh, I didn't know you had one here and it's near my house so they don't have to come all the way out uh, to this machine. So we're always trying to tell them where other machines are and we're always putting out new machines. But you know, th this is really effective in places like laundry mats where people are captive and kind of sitting around not doing anything. And okay. then they pick up your brochure and start reading it. And we see, you don't see that in too many locations where people are just sporadically buy Bitcoin. But in a laundry mat, you do. And they'll they'll come up. Gives them time to think about it. They've heard about, they got nothing but to do, right? Sitting around, and, <laughs> so they pick okay. up the brochure and read it. Okay, so and then so you see you see kids using it and things like that. So nice. it it definitely is an effect. It's it's interesting. Okay, okay, all right. So now, so we so we we looked at wrapping the machine. We looked at the top screen. We looked at location on site as an as an important part of the marketing strategy. Um, so so let's expand from there. So the next kind of the next kind of thought is to is to think about is, is the signage people use. So there's There'll be a, we got a whole bunch of different kinds of signs to talk about. So, so what's the next step in signs? So in, in signs inside the, inside the business that would point to the machine or inside the business looking out on the street or what, let's talk about inside indoor signage. Sure, so let me just answer this one question. He's asking, he's asking about <laughs> putting a QR code on, on the machine. Oh, okay. So, so let me answer this because a lot of people do this and, and, um, the, the, the problem with the QR code in, in the Bitcoin space is people think it's you, you're scanning it's a Bitcoin code. So, you know, I know it's becoming more common space to go in there and the restaurants, you take your menu on there and people are getting familiar with scanning QR codes and getting a web interface. So I think that that could be a viable. You, yes. The answer is yes, you can do it. Um, I don't know anybody doing it right now. Simply because I, have, stayed I, away have from one that. I have one operator that does that and nobody uses yeah. it. So, it, it, okay. you know, and what it really boils down to is, yeah, you know, I think, I think the, you're, you're stealing my Bitcoin or something. I, I don't know. I, I, I think there would be. I don't want to yeah. scan the QR code. I want a menu, you know, yeah. so your, your demographics different with Bitcoin ATMs. Or, I mean, like you're, you're, you're going to be trying to get try, somebody. Try and let us know. Yeah. <laughs> so the question was, uh, you know, where, where do we advertise from there? Um, you know, the windows. Yeah. The windows on the store. So, you know, a lot of times in the stores, we have uh, things hanging down saying, you know, Bitcoin ATM and, and arrows pointing back if it's kind of not in the front of the store, if it's somewhere in the back of the store. So they, they know, you know, or if they don't know, at least they see it. And certainly we have these bright LED signs that we put up in the front of the stores. So when people come up in their cars or drive by, they see that. Um, if we can get billboard space outside of the store there, we certainly uh, we'll do that. A lot of the gas stations might have space on their banner with their gas prices, and we'll we'll take part of that, or or a banner down the street, or whatever whatever's available. Um, it depends on on the jurisdiction. You can put bandit signs, or you can put the pendants, the flags out there. You see them probably all over now, where where they're they're flying out there. Um, most places allow that, even the ones that say they're gonna, so you shouldn't have it over a certain period of time. Um, okay. So, so so those are all good, and then sort of trailers work certainly too. trailers so work. Okay, a trailer specifically, like a trailer, like with wheels, the whole debt, like wrapping. Yeah, we have a trailer, trailer that we move our machines around it. Yeah, so we have a, I think it's like a, you know, ten foot trailer or whatever, and we had it completely wrapped, just like it looks almost like the machine with the machines okay. on it. And as we're driving around, everyone's looking at it, like, what the heck is that thing? Because it's it's bright orange, just like you know Bitcoin. So, and, and then we can just leave it in front of the new location, um, you know, buy Bitcoin here. So it, it gives it a good kickstart to just leave it there. Um, okay for, for a few days so so sign wise you got 
we have the we have the yard signs that people put in the like in the grass that are that are movable. You have the we could never come up. We, we were talked about this before the webinar. But we don't know the name of the the, the the signs that they fill with air that kind of float in the in the breeze. You know, we come up with the name for that kind of sign. Yeah, yeah. So that that, that catches people's those. eye. People look. Yeah. People look. Yeah. But you know, um, you're not going to be able to read what's on those things. So you need like a sign with it that's going to make it stand out, you know. So then you're they're like, oh, they got fixed point dancer. So there's this wavy dude. <laughs> you know. Okay. And then we've also uh, seen Tyler do... answered it. It's a it's a tube dancer. That's the, tube that's dancer. The okay, there you go. <laughs> so we yeah, also have seen nice people time. put in basically like a, a looks like a balloon, almost like a hot air balloon, because we have a, we have a good picture of yeah. of a, one of our customers. Uh, has this Bitcoin sign, so they inflate that. Now, they're probably not leaving that up all the time. That's sort of during a, an initial promotional period, I'm assuming, or is that something that's up all the time? Um, I believe that's no, I up all the time. It up. Is all it? right. He, he's in our chat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, that, that's, that, is, that's... that is a rule in some places. Like you, you, That oh. is a problem in some, some places. You can only leave he, it up for a period moving, of time. He, so, so he's moving it around to different locations. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's, okay, that's the way to do it. You move. You people notice it too because if you leave it there too long, then then yeah. people don't really notice it anymore. It's just kind of part of the fixture, right? If you move it around, it's gone, and then they don't know what happened. All of a sudden, now it's back again. They notice it, so you get you get just yeah. That's the best okay. way to. Okay. Okay. Well, now there's an, there's before we leave the physical location and switch into talk about websites and other types of promotion. Um, I did want to touch on some. We've seen customers also have have events where they basically will set up a table and someone will sit behind the table with with like brochures information um answering questions it's sort of like a, a weekend promotional event i mean can you can you guys talk about that success there and how those work well um yeah so i i think that that works why because you get people that are a little intimidated by the machine and then what you're doing is you're you're building a a, a human there that can answer their questions and that's kind of that's one of the reasons uh, customers like to actually call the phone number is because they're not just talking to a machine. They're getting a human element. Mm -hmm. So if I put a table there. You could strike up a conversation with people that might they might be interested in, you know, how does this machine work? You know, what is Bitcoin? And they're just they just never will do it without actually getting the conversation going. And so that's a good way. And, and it's also a good way to market your locations. So you don't have to have a booth at the actual store. You can you can go to like you know uh, fall festivals, summer festivals, winter festivals, stuff like that. Um, you know fairs, uh, anything that you can get a booth at, and you can hand out you know pamphlets and give out. And this you know we'll talk about this uh, free Bitcoin. Here's five dollars worth of free Bitcoin if you go to one of my ATMs, and then people are more likely to actually go try that out because here's free bitcoin you know so they're not risking anything okay and it's an attaching a, it's attaching a human face which is which is a big part of that yeah you know in the successful marketing machine something that seems to be really important is this customer service element or when people want to have oh, someone yeah. to talk to they yeah. they're you're actually there and, and i guess the, I mean, even the, the promise of that is as i've heard the stories told um people get to know like and trust you and they really come back i mean those are the long-term people that actually really do a lot of business with the machines and speak, speaking of that the, the, the other thing that you want to do is the bitcoin meetup group so if, if there's not one where you are you need to start one you need to support it if there is one you want to try to get a machine wherever they hold the location or sponsor it in a location that you have your machine lots of new people come to these things and, and say hey how do i get bitcoin having your machine there actually helps people show people how to use bitcoin and of course now they understand how to buy it from your machine that that's that's definitely something I tell new operators always always find your local Bitcoin meetup or or start one yourself and um, and support it with your machine. Okay, so well, so now we're we're kind of getting into the to the rings further out further outside the from the physical location. So meetups are a thing. Um, we talk we could talk a little about social media. Sometimes it'd be used like a Facebook group, uh, other online you know meetup spaces to be able to to talk about Bitcoin to be able to to promote people to come to the machines in a local area. I mean, any any stories about that you guys can share? Yeah, I mean, it, so so almost every community has a Facebook group, and so if you can get a part of that, um, you can put a promotion in there to give away Bitcoin or something like that. Usually, they don't mind if you're giving something away as long as they you you talk to the admins, make sure it's not a scam, that kind of thing. But you give away Bitcoin um, and be, let people know that it's in the town there. So there, there you, you can find them. There's a little Facebook group. Sometimes there's Twitter hashtags and in, in bigger communities. You just find communities of people, pockets of communities. Ask them if you can 
you know, give away Bitcoin and, and just let people know that that's that's definitely been an effective way to to do that. Okay, so now there are not, let's step into the online space a little bit more. So if someone wants to, there there are services, and I'm I'm not sure that everyone's aware of these services, but there are, I mean, a term I, I use from the marketing standpoint is is aggregating, right? So there are companies that that their business or their purpose is to show where the Bitcoin ATMs are. So um, can we talk, let's talk about those services and registering with, for those and what they might do. And I'll, I'll kick that to you, Keith. What do you, what do you think about aggregators? Yeah, I, I, I think the one service is Coin ATM Map and the other service is Coin ATM Radar. Coin ATM Radar is the, uh, that's like the king of all those aggregators. And uh, it's free. <laughs> It's free. And so half of our operators use it. It's a free service. And it's really something that you want to start as soon as you deploy that ATM, because you will get customers from that website. Uh, what people do is they just type in their address. It doesn't just go to that website. It, it's like you said, it's an aggregator. It goes out to a lot of different people pull from that site and, and they're in other wallets and things like that. So you start there and it kind of permeates. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and people can find their actual, like, like the closest ATM to them. And they can say, okay, well, I've got the, these are the three closest Bitcoin ATMs to me. And now, now they know where they are. Um, so what, what operators should do is take a photo of the machine, take a photo of the location, put their contact information in there. And that, that way people can actually contact them before they even go to the ATM. They don't have to go to the ATM to get the contact information. Okay. Well, I went to Coin ATM Radar's website and I did a little a little clicking around to see how difficult or easy it might be to, to set up a machine. It's super easy. On their site, there's a there are just a few menu items on the top. One of them says more. And if you click the click on the more tab, uh, what shows up is just literally the second item from the top is submit a new ATM. And when you click on that link, it does yeah, right there, it has has all it's that easy stuff. To add, but there's there's you know, there's, there's, but, like the guy's saying here in, in the channel that it's not accurate, right? So, so you can, it's like the Roach Motel, they go in, but they don't come out. So machines okay. get listed there that haven't, haven't, they never take them off. That's the problem. So an operator mm -hmm. goes through the process of adding them um, and then they don't get removed. And, and people get very frustrated with that when they go and try to find a machine. So that's why he was saying it's important to give your number because they will call. They're sick of it. Like they'll go, I would say half the machines on there don't exist. So uh -huh. they're going to go okay. and it's like, where's, where's the machine? Oh, it was never, it either was never there or it's been gone forever or it's just out of service. And so you see a lot of that stuff. So, so um, having your so phone number. That, that is is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It really is. It's important to have your phone number on there because people are going to call and they're going to say, is your ATM at this location? So, okay. Okay. And, and also on, on coin ATM in particular, <laughs> they have a link. So on our dashboard and our, in our, uh, in the chain bytes model of machines, there's a, there's a uh, GUID that you can put in there and it'll actually link up to the machine and show them that it's live online right now. So you can, so that's, that's another uh, thing that helps customers know that, okay, it's really there. It's, it's, um, you know, a lot of these phantom machines. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so there are the aggregator services that we, we talked about. So some social media promotion. Um, let's talk a little bit about um google advertising and some of the, the paid advertising there's a concept in in just online marketing called fencing essentially where you basically take a, a physical location of a business and you draw like a fence around it right i mean it's just a, just a, a border these borders sometimes have hard lines sometimes they have like a um, a one mile radius in a circle a lot of different ways to create the fence um but Let's talk about what, what opportunities are there for people to use fencing for promoting their, their ATM machines. Well, uh, are, are you talking about Google in particular or just in general? Because Google, uh, Google's well, you know, I should say, I should say in general because I mean, again, if, if the if the advertising platform you know will allow you to advertise your your business, I mean, even Facebook can do fencing. I mean, see, it's it's a it's just a concept where you create a border and that you and you work within that parameter. Um, but specifically Google, like what, what Keith, you, you got some insight into, into geofencing and how it helps Bitcoin ATM operators. What, what are your thoughts? You, that? Can, you, you can target the demographic <laughs> you're trying to target. And mm -hmm. like, like I was trying to explain earlier about the, the QR codes, you, the, the type of demographic that actually uses the QR codes is not the type of uh, demographic that Bitcoin ATM. So they tend not to be tech savvy and tend to be a little bit older. So you, who do you want to target? Do you want to target 18 to 20 year olds? No, you don't. 
you want to be targeting 50 year old plus well you can set in those demographics and like yes you you know like i don't think you can actually advertise on facebook it's not a very friendly place for cryptocurrency businesses right. but with google yes you can target those demographics but it, you and the fencing itself is targeted in that geographical area so mm -hmm. it's like this area and only that area not the next town over you don't want people from that town coming to this town because they're not going to come to this town okay and so you typically when somebody works with fencing like that and in, in, with google anyway they're they're usually using a third party to help them yes and, and that's a, that's just the way google is like you have to know somebody at google to do business with google and okay. so the market <laughs> marketing firms they, they they're also that you're a crypto company there, there's other restrictions like you can't google you can't advertise with google until you you have to provide them with your msb license um th there's there's other problems in there um especially as a crypto company and and so um a lot of times it helps if you have an agency help you through the process o on your own you don't have the right people and their tendency is just to tell you no and then you don't know who to talk to um you know we found using an agency sometimes they're able to talk to somebody there explain to them what you're doing and and it's not a problem but uh, it, it is somebody just posted what, what the requirements are it's fincen and a, and a state yeah. license and so most bitcoin atm operators don't have a state license and that's where, where that's where you get into the problem because you have the federal license and, and that's fine but then you don't have the state license and they're like well then you can't advertise so some people have gotten around that but that that's technically what you have to have and not everyone has it yeah, so i mean you can and, and, you can show a no action letter or no opinion <laughs> an opinion letter saying you don't have to register Maybe you get away with that. Good luck. I mean, it's interesting though that 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 the fact that there's these uh, open questions sometimes they're indications of this still is a new business. I mean, the, you know, as, as regulations roll out, um, I just an indication of the fact that I mean, it's still it's still early and developing relationships with the people that having having machines on the ground and beginning to develop relationships relationships with people on a, this this kind of early days. I mean, it just provides more opportunity. It seems to me. I mean, would you guys agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, they, there's still ways to advertise on Google without advertising and paying money. And that's doing SEO, building a website. To your website, you're building your SEO. So uh, most of the, so yes, uh, get, getting advertising agencies is important, but most of that is SEO. It's building a website. You really have to, you have to, your uh, heading is right. And this is really a, it's, it's a really good uh, targeted effort for your business because uh, most operators are not going to be all 50 states you're, and your, your, your biggest competition is these mega operators. Do you think they're targeting in and trying to hone in on these little locations? No, they're not. So this gives you an opportunity to build up a name in that neighborhood. Okay. Okay. Good stuff. All right. So let's jump into some of the chat questions. Uh, or is there anything else, anything else we, we, you guys want to cover that you're thinking in terms of like, we were inside the store, we went outside slowly, you know, to the, to the, to the signs, we went to online. We have social media, we have advertising. Well, I mean, there's a lot of digital marketing tricks, but it's n nothing special about that, that, that any any business, I mean, you know, aside from like what I just said, where, you know, you set it up as a brick and mortar business because you do have a physical location there. So you are mm -hmm. able to get a card and you're able to, to claim it and, and get some traction there. And, and most people aren't going to go it, through. Yeah, the, the, the owners of the stores, you want them to try your Bitcoin ATM out. You want to give them Bitcoin. And you want to give them cash and say, here, go to the machine, try it out yourself. Yeah, they're your biggest, they're your biggest work. advocate for sure. Yeah, yeah. and, and they, they, they will push customers your way. So, you know, you definitely want them on board. Well, Keith, I, Keith I had a good tidbit earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. um, I mentioned this yeah. earlier. Tell, tell me about the thing with the giving out the, yeah. So, yeah. so if you spend $100 in our store, you get $5 worth of free Bitcoin from the Bitcoin ATM. And so you can hand out our coupons or, you know, the, uh, where do they call it? Voucher. Vouchers. Vouchers. <laughs> you get, yeah, yeah it's a $5 worth of, uh, it's $5 worth of you know, free Bitcoin, $10, whatever you want. Okay. And um, it, it's just a code. Okay. It's a one-time code. They can redeem it there at the Bitcoin ATM and take out free Bitcoin. And who wouldn't want to take free Bitcoin? I just spent a hundred or just spent a, a hundred dollars at this store. You know, might as well get five dollars free back out of that machine in the corner, right? Keith, Keith's, Keith's buying Bitcoin at the Tesla dealer, right? You spend a hundred thousand <laughs> dollars. You, you, you can use it as like a, <laughs> you can use it as a rewards program, right? So, so you can incorporate it into what uh, you know. And, and these mom and pop shops might not have like a sophisticated rewards program, but here you go, they can simply do something like that. So, so it's just so, an idea. 
Um, so and, just, and a lot of times people are asking the store owners about the machine and how to use it. So training them on how to use it and giving them, you know, vouchers where they can say, you know, to their best customers here, here's $5 worth of Bitcoin, go try it out. Um, can, can, you know, can you talk a little bit about how the vouchers are created? So it's through the dashboard in the system or how, how do you, how do you? Yeah, so, so typically you'll, you'll work it out with the, the operator. will work it out with the, the store owner and say, here's some, you know, he'll ask them for vouchers. You just go into the dashboard, you create the vouchers and then you print them out and, and you give them, give them to them. So okay. it's, it's pretty okay. yeah, it, but it's in the dashboard of the, of the machine. Okay. Okay. So, all right. Well, let's jump into some of the chat questions. Um, let's see. Uh, it says more of a, more of a question, more of a question of inquiry. And I'm wondering what your company can provide versus other companies. Um, also coin ATM is always accurate. You guys mentioned, mentioned that earlier. Yeah, I mean, some what what are some things about Chainbytes that makes us different than than other Bitcoin ATM manufacturers? Right, we're here talking to you about how to how to create this and how to be successful in the business, and I think that's one of the things that has has attracted a lot of people who have had other machines is they don't get any support. They're kind of out there on their own and things like this, like experience from other operators, just the community of of, of people and the the experiences. Um, we don't just sell machines; I operate them, so I understand what it is to be an operator. We all do, right? We all pay attention to what our operators are doing. We respond to them. The software evolves with operators and challenges and banking and all these all these things that we're going through as an industry and, and compliance as it's going to change. So uh, that's what we can do. We're, we're always going to be ahead of it. We're always going to be staying ahead of those things. So that's one. Our software is really easy to use, not just on the front end where customers are <laughs> buying and selling their Bitcoin, but on the back end for operating their machines. I mean, when, it, when you become one of our customers, you're not just one of our customers. Your success means our success. Okay. Yeah. And the, so the, and the dashboard software is also helpful that to, to the degree uh, that, that uh, pe people can use our, our dashboard software to help with compliance questions, I suppose, as well. I want to just ask you about that. How does it help in the area of compliance? Well, for sure. So we're, so we're partnered with a, a number of compliance companies, people um, who have all asked for different things to make their jobs easier and, and to identify things in the programs and to implement everybody's program. I don't think we've ever had, we've, we've had some pretty crazy programs in some countries that we've had to implement that, you know, um, but, but here in the United States, it's all pretty straightforward and we know what we need to do. Um, so, so that goes in there. Um, okay. But we, we have a roadmaps.chainbytes.com, which will show you sort of what we're working on and what's in the path. And then operators can request different things and it goes into the you know, they vote on it and say, hey, this is important to me. You know, we, we had some QuickBooks integrations and different integrations that we that we work on that people want to see and help them in their business and bots and things like that to notify them when things happen and low low cash and things like that. So we're, all, we're constantly improving the software and we're always looking to do that. We we have daily scrums and, and we go through that that roadmap. So how, how do the machines, when someone buys a machine, how does it show up? Is it, do they have to program it or is it, how, how does this, how do they get no. the dashboard software to, to, to the operation of the machine? Well, that's the other thing. I guess, well, you're feeding me, feed me. Um, so, so that's another thing that differentiates us. I mean, it's turnkey. So you mail the machine, you plug it in and connect it to the internet and we take care of everything. Uh, we get it up and running. We walk you through the dashboard. We show you how to use it. Um, by then you'll have a compliance program if you're here in the United States and you'll implement that into the dashboard and then the machines will just do it. And then at that point, it's just a matter of getting comfortable and familiar with the dashboard. Most of what you're doing is in there and some okay. of it will be emptying cash out and things like that. But so yeah. how, do, how does the software stay updated? I mean, do you have a download or how, did, how, does, that, how does that work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, all, all uh, automat <laughs> automatically. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So as long as you're connected to the internet, yeah, we, there, the company does regular updates to, to the software. Yeah, yeah. Like Tesla, we just push it out. You never even. You're know. Like, <laughs> it's like Tesla. Okay, all right. So, um, let's see. There's a bunch of questions here. Uh, how about is there standardized charge across the board for what the company charges for use of the owner machine? Does that vary by state to state? So, is there a charge for using the machine, and and is it does it vary by state? So, it so depends, it, yeah, no, it depends neighborhood by neighborhood, <laughs> the operator okay. by operator. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So typically, typically we're seeing <laughs> operators are charging anywhere from like twelve to seventeen percent. Uh, some places in the country they're they're charging as high as thirty percent, like California. Uh, but that's like a neighborhood neighborhood thing. Uh, average across the United States is about fourteen percent. 
Uh, we, tar we charge operators 1%. How does a Bitcoin ATM operator make money? Um, so, so the answer, the answer to that question is, is it, it's, it's in that, that spread of the fee. And so there's a markup. They put a markup as to what they want to charge and then it marks it up. So when customers use the machine, it automatically embeds that into the transaction. Oh, okay. Okay. That's great. So, so now, uh, there was a question that, that came in. Do people need to pay for coin ATM radar or, 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 or should they, is, is there a paid version? Is it better? Well, what it does is it like uh, ties it to your website and allows you to put your logo on there. So when people are like searching on the map and stuff, your, your name kind of pops out a little bit more. Um, it's not something that many people have done. Um, so I don't really have the statistics on it or anything, but okay. it, I, I don't see why it would hurt. I, I mean, that's when you're doing, when you're actually linking your website, where, where Quinn ATM radar is linking your website, you're building SEO. So that's a good way to build your SEO on your website. Okay. Now, as far we talked about when we were doing, going through the marketing, we, we took it from the individual machine and then outward. And another question that comes up is what, what is a good location? Let's, can we talk about like um, different types of locations? First of all, what in general terms, what defines a good location in, in your eyes? I, I would say, I would say convenience. Want to make some money? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but no, yeah, but seriously, uh, convenience <clears throat> is key. Um, if it's not a convenient location, People, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna see the money that you think you're gonna, you're gonna make all that. It's safe, money. yes, okay. a safe, safe and convenient. So it, it, even as much as like, so you might say, hey, this is this is prime real estate commercial road frontage, but pulling in and out of that gas station is gonna get you killed. Do you think okay. somebody's gonna stop there and where they can go one block off the off the main road where it's nice and safe at that gas station? They'll actually go to the other gas station because it's it, it's easy for them to pull in and out of. So okay. these are all things that you want to take into account when picking out locations. Uh, a place like a mall. All, often people think that malls are like because it's a high foot traffic location. It's a great place to put a Bitcoin ATM. Mm -hmm. And you, you might see you know a bunch of transactions on there, but there'll be smaller transactions because nobody wants to walk through a mall with thousands of dollars in their pocket, parking way out in the parking lot to put money in a machine nobody okay. wants to go to a restaurant and well, just, just think about where you're where you're going to use an atm machine right you're not you're not going to use it where people all around pan like so you know people <laughs> people think they want to put it in high foot traffic areas but is that where you want to do your business of no not really um you kind of balance it out like you said it's it's convenient security um th those two factors are a big big part of it okay well let's let's but let's let's narrow down to um so, for example, we we see like a corner grocery store, but with with convenient parking parking there. Um, we see gas stations sometimes because they're open. They have their their hours are long. They have a fair amount of people coming through. They're safe. They they're well lit. Um, what other kind of places do, can you guys mom, can you guys mom and pop shops? Uh, you know, it could be it could be like a, a local general store. Okay. Uh, is there a <laughs> Kind of Where like, you see ATM uh, machines, right? Oops. That that's that's that they've already been mapped out for you. It's kind of like the Walmart phenomenon, right? If you like, people ask you where you, where should you put your store near Walmart because they've already mapped out where where it's going to be successful. So where an ATM machine is, if it is if it's even moderately successful, that's going to be a good location for you as well. So that that's it's the same criteria that makes a good ATM location is the same thing for a Bitcoin ATM location. Okay, okay, and so so another question that, that comes up is. It's a strategy for success that 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 I've heard Keith talk about several times. Is what, what if, if somebody has two machines versus five machines? Um, how does the number of machines relate to improving your odds for success? Well, you you've only you only need two. You know, it, so if you buy if you get one machine and you place it somewhere, you're putting all your eggs in one basket. It's just it's a gamble. You don't know if that location is going to turn out good, especially if you're just starting out because you have to kind of feel these locations out. If you, if you get multiple machines, you, we'll say you get five machines, two of those machines take off and they do well, they pay for the other three. So you could actually say, oh, well, these other three locations didn't work out. It doesn't matter, they're already paid for. So now you can take those and move them to the location, the locations that resemble the two that worked <laughs> out. And then you, you uh, see your return on your investment, and, you, and then you're buying more machines, you're growing your business, and you're seeing a lot more profit. 
Oh, okay. Okay. Now there, there's actually a chat question that relates to that. So somebody, let's say somebody has five machines and Eric, you should, you should take this because you've got m many machines. How, how does somebody, first of all, does the dashboard system give you the ability to look at all your machines at one time, or is it machine by machine? How, 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 how does, how does somebody manage this, this, this their machines using the system that we, we have in place? Is, is this the question about the remote access to monitor the transactions uh -huh. is that uh -huh. what you're asking me about? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You, so you have a dashboard and it centralizes all of the transactions into one place. It does all your compliance, uh, everything you need to do to operate the machine you do from that dashboard. And yes, you can do it on your phone, your iPad, your, your computer, what, whatever, whatever you want to uh, do it on. Um, yeah. The number of transactions, you can look into the transactions, you can clear the transactions. Um, it, there's, I mean, there's a lot of anything you can do on there. You can do on your mobile phone. Do you, do you, um, sometimes you, you've shown a, a screenshot or a picture of a, of a dashboard. You, you, you up for that today? <laughs> Nothing like putting on the spot. So it shows all the machines. It shows the volume of transaction, the, the business they're doing, the, the, the transaction, uh, costs, I guess the, whether or not they're operating currently. So here's, uh, the dashboard. So, so here's all the, the machines, how much money's in them. And then he was asking about the order. So this could be on your iPad or whatever else it is. And you can see all the different orders. You could drill into the orders. Uh, you can drill into the customer. You can look into the forensics. You can do pretty much anything you want uh, on there. Uh, you can change the fees. You can do everything from here. This is this is the primary place where you, uh, you put in your AML policy. You deal with your compliance. You set up the things. If we were talking about... Um, giving people uh, campaigns, the uh, so vouchers and things like that, you would do that in here. Okay. Um, what else What else you wanna see on here? Your wallets are all in here, so you can see that stuff. So you can, you can literally from this front page, everything you need to see, um, you can do from here. Okay, so, yeah. so as people expand their machines, is there a limit to the number of machines you can, you can run with a dashboard? Nope, no, no, I mean, okay. this one, what is it, this is, we have like, yeah, and we, and we walk you are. through this and we show you what you do with the software and how everything works. So it's it's really simple. Once you get your walkthrough, you'll understand that, that looks like a lot of data. And it kind of is a lot of data, but you'll understand what it is. Well, all that's means. 30 machines, right? That's 30 machines. So that that is a lot of data. That's a, there's a lot of transactions that does quite a bit of volume every week. So for sure. Right. Okay. So is it, if you guys were looking at... Um, just thinking of the history of all the people you've talked to and we, we, we work with, um, I mean, Kate, like a case study. I mean, what's what's a good, you know, any good good war stories really of of somebody who started with a couple of machines and then expanded like this? I mean, other than talking about yourself, Eric, you can do it if you want. But I mean, what what's what's the what's the journey like? Uh, there, there's a lot of different stories. <laughs> Every story is different. Every story okay. is different. That's what I can say. So that, that like, you know, it's like any business, you're starting a business. So there's going to be, you're going to hit bumps in the road and you have to be prepared to take those bumps and just keep going, you know, and, and find, you know, solutions to any problems that you're going to have. Um, as for like marketing and I've seen, everybody's got different things. I have one operator. What he does is, you know, like once he secures a location, he gives a, uh, a gold uh, or a, a silver, uh, a silver ounce Bitcoin round. So he gives that to them. So then they actually have like a piece of silver that's mm -hmm. got a Bitcoin stamp on it. And, and those, those landlords love it. That it gets them, you know, they're like, oh man, I love this Bitcoin ATM. I got a piece of silver <laughs> and, you know, like get them all hyped up. There, there's so many different ways that you can go about it with, with marketing. Um, we do have some questions. I do want to answer these uh, questions. Oh. Do you want me to? Oh yeah, absolutely. Let's jump in. Let's jump in. You, you want to? Okay. So a quick question. I'm in the process of relocating to another state. Is it possible to purchase the Bitcoin ATMs and put them in storage until I move to the to the next state? The machines won't go online until I'm officially a resident of the state or do I have to wait until I'm completely relocated? Now, you can buy these machines now and you can start your process and get, you know, like it, you're going to want to build a website, stuff like that. If you're if you've got a plan, you got a business plan, you might as well get this ball rolling. Because you can have those machines ready to go. You can train in how the software works. And you can have your compliance program. Everything. So you can pull the trigger as soon as you're a resident of that state. Okay. I, I'll do the next one. It says, hey, guys, I've been searching and searching for a bank that will open 
a business account for my BTMs. I'm in Florida and I've been escorted out of almost every bank and credit union in town. I've tried contacting Garda, Loomis, et cetera, and they will not call back. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they can't. Uh, so the armored car service can't bank you. They, they, they have to have a bank. Uh, there has to be a collateral bank there for you. For you. So you have to find a bank that's willing uh, to do some MSBs. You're in Florida. You're actually in a pretty decent state to do that. There's, there's, um, well, surety bank for sure. Is, <laughs> um, you, you can deal with them. They're, they're pretty stringent though. If you're not, if you're new, they're probably not going to want to deal with you. And that, that's sort of the problem new operators have is getting started. They're too small for the banks to want to take risk. Um, you haven't been doing it long enough for them to think, yeah, you know what you're doing. Um, so, so, so it is a bit of a struggle, but um, yeah, there, there's quite a if few. If you banks haven't in started that yet, to... that's going to be a, a really hard struggle. No bank wants to deal with uh, any right. business, anybody that's not even started. Cause like you, you need to have machines. You need to be, you need to have a compliance program. Okay. So you have to, you have to have compliance and you've got to be operational. You got to have cash flow. If you've got no skin in the game, they don't want to like, why would they open risk to that? It's, and it's like, uh, we've used this before, this analogy. Um, it's like going to a race car track and saying, I want to be a race car driver. Well, where's your, have you ever uh, raced a car? No, I've not. Have you, well, do you have a driver's license? No, I don't. Have you ever driven a car? I don't even own a I'm car. I'm amazed at how many people give up on that. They, they went in there to the bank and tried to open this account and they asked them who's their compliance officer. It's like, I don't have one. Like, well, why would you like, like put yourself in their shoes? Why would they, why would they even talk to you? That's, that's insane. But yet we see people do it all the time. It, it is a struggle. It is, it is something that, that people need to do. Um, you know, bank line, people talk about bank line. That's another company that helps people assist people. Um, they typically don't work with people unless they're doing at least a half a million dollars a month. Well, how do they get there? Um, there's secure cash. There's a couple of other ones that are, that are catering to the small ones. You know, th 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 there's some other things going on, but you know, it's, it's really, you got to talk to the bank and build a relationship and try. And, and sometimes it's, it's getting an account and operating for a little while, and then they shut you down and getting another one. And, and, you know, that's, that's the business. Cash management is the hard part of this business in the United States. Okay. All right. So the next one says, I operate in a state that doesn't require an MSB license. And I'm working with Google to get past the requirement of one. If that fails, do you think a third party company ha that has a Google relationships will help or do I need to get a state license? Anybody want to take That's that? That's what we did. Um, we, Cause we, yeah, we don't, we don't, we didn't have a state license. And, and so, um, you know, they were okay with it for a while, then they're not. And we were back and forth and uh, finally we're like, okay, we, we're not going to do this anymore. So we got an agency and they have a relationship with them. We haven't had any problems. It's worked just fine. So okay. um, right, yeah, that, yeah, try it. Um, and then in six months, <laughs> they'll change their rules again. And, you know, this is, this is why you charge what you charge. I mean, yeah. like this is not just a plug in a machine. I'm going to be a billionaire, you know, type business. It, it, it's a business and it takes, you know, it takes effort to run a business like any business, uh, you know, check cashing. Uh, yeah. Uh, check cashing. These have this issue. ATM companies have this issue. You know, it's it's basically any kind of cash business has. Yeah, it's not big, it's not Bitcoin. It's 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 cash. Yeah, it's it, there's a lot of reasons for that, but it, it's definitely because of the cash. Okay. Okay. Get a no action letter from an attorney saying that you know the state saying you don't need to register, right? Like their their opinion is that you don't need to register. Um, that that may work if you get somebody to listen to you, and that's why getting an agency works because. If you're just an individual, you're not going to have that kind of relationship, whereas they will, and they'll be able to talk to somebody there that can make a decision and help you with that. And, and that's, we just gave up. We, we, we've been, we're tired of it. We, we would, everything's fine. We're advertising. And then psh, next day we're done. And then we start the process all over again. Facebook's the same way. And Facebook's even worse, actually. So, yep. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so what, one thing you mentioned, Eric, when you were talking about the person going to the, the bank, where they said, well, do you have a compliance officer? What, I mean, the, we, we have definite so solutions or help in that, in that regard. Um, you guys would you want to take that? Like, um, how, how do we help people like just from the point of entry to, to, to get situated relative to, to compliance? Well, they, um, you know, we have a BTM compliance.com helps our most, a lot of our operators on board um, who are unfamiliar with this, get onboarded, uh, help them through the process. Um, they've been working with a lot of these banks, so um, they they kind of understand what some of these banks are looking for, um, and and depending on where you are, you know, they can probably help with some of that. And I and I think that I personally see more banks opening up to this, so it's it's getting a little bit easier. 
Um, and there's uh, there's a lot more going on there. So, you know, hang in there, I guess. That's the best way to okay. Put it. Okay. Another chat question is, is, how long does it take to get an ATM once you order it? About 35 days from okay. time the time that we receive payment until delivery. Unless we have them in stock. If, if we have to make it. Yeah. Unless we have them in stock. Right. Yeah. And, okay. and so we're constantly producing. We're trying to keep up with demand. Um, if we have them in stock, we can get them out seven to 10 days. Now we're dealing with DHL. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Now, now we got them made. Now we got to get them out of the country. So the supply chain is absolutely <laughs> fun. So it's, it's really oh, okay. Okay. Um, we were six, we were six pounds over today and they, they, they held up one of our shipments and like every other day. It's okay today. No. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Well, so there's one question that says, how do you transfer, transfer uh, Bitcoin into cash? Like what, what this is a new person. He's, he's, well, I guess he really wants to understand the dynamic of somebody puts money in the machine. How does the, how does the transaction occur? What, what's, what's the logistics of the, of the sale and, and the, the back and forth between the, customer in the machine. So for, for, for math's sake, okay, we'll say you're charging 10%. Customer comes up, they have a $100 bill. They place that $100 bill into your machine and they click buy Bitcoin. At that time, that customer is getting $90 worth of Bitcoin for a $100 bill. At the same exact time, the dashboard software, which is tied to the exchange API, your Bitcoin exchange, is automatically buying back $90 worth of Bitcoin to replace what you just sold to your customer from your hot wallet. Your one hot wallet ties to all of your Bitcoin ATMs. Once you've accumulated enough dollars in your Bitcoin ATM, you, you collect those dollars and different denominations, deposit them into a bank, wire them from your bank to your Bitcoin exchange. You have to have US dollars on your Bitcoin exchange in order to automatically buy back the Bitcoin that you sell from your Bitcoin hot wallet. Once you've depleted the amount of Bitcoin in, in, the, in your uh, Bitcoin hot wallet, you just move over the Bitcoin from your exchange account into that hot wallet so you can service your customers at your ATMs. So it's even though they're buy and sell Bitcoin ATMs, it's still 90 to 99% people buying Bitcoin. People just like to have the ability, it's a psychological thing, to be able to come back and sell Bitcoin. And maybe they might need to. They have an emergency that arises. They just like that. They, they like that they can it's mostly people it's mostly cash flowing into the machine and then you got to take the cash from the machine service that cash take it to a, a, a get it into a bank and then from the bank get it to your bitcoin exchange there's other ways of also doing it uh you know i've got operators that work with a uh, otc desk i have operators that also uh what they do is they uh, work with like check cashing agencies um it, you know building business relationships in town with other businesses uh, you know, they, they, they uh, offer very low fees to incentivize people to come sell them Bitcoin at their ATMs because they can immediately get deposited Bitcoin into their ATM. They can take it and resell it right away. So there's a lot of different ways that, you know, creative ways uh, big, uh, operators find to, uh, you know, turn that cash back into Bitcoin. And that's one of the reasons you got to charge what you got to charge because it's not easy. Bitcoin's rare and Bitcoin's not easy to come about. It's, it's, it's probably the most rare commodity, you know, priced in its market cap in the world. <laughs> so it's hard to get a, it's hard to get a hold of. So, you know, you're going to, you're going to run into the little bumps in the roads. So charge what you're worth. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So here's a, here's a question that Eric, I'll, I'll throw to you because you can actually, you can actually show behind you. Um, one question, the question is uh, what kind of machines do you offer? And it says you have the model behind Eric that's in orange. <laughs> what is that machine? I love that machine. Uh, that machine is wrapped. That machine's wrapped. So yeah. custom by that, that's by actually your the same business. machine. It's, it's yeah, it's actually the same machine as this. It's just wrapped, um, and it's a little taller. Uh, this was white versus that black, but it's actually the same machine. Um, and so it's just wrapped. Yeah. Yeah. So so the machines we have there 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 are they're two, called two the, way. And then we have the little one over there, uh, the other side of the room. There, if you see the. The white one we have that and then the rest of those uh. so what you see there is um the, the model that's right behind him is actually a, an older model of ours the model you see to yeah, the right is our newer model right am i correct so that, that's correct that so what we do is we we have the universal that's what you see right there to the right of eric 
and um, that universal, you can have a you can have the uh, screen come uh, the top screen come with it for an additional three hundred dollars, or you can do that later. You get you don't have to get the top screen right away. If you want to do your top screens later, you can have you, you can order them down the line and then upgrade your Bitcoin ATMs. Um, they also you know they, they come ready for an S and G lock. And an SG lock is a smart lock. It's an audible lock that allows, um, a, you know, a money trail. So you know who's going in and out of your uh, your Bitcoin ATM. Um, you can have that installed in that machine right there to the right. Uh, the other machine he showed, the white one that was all the way to the right, um, that one comes with an SG lock. You can't get an additional screen with that one, but it is a pretty cool looking little machine. We haven't we haven't sold any of those yet. So I don't know if any customer wants to be the first one. I don't, think anybody, I don't think we have them on our website yet, do we? No, we don't. We don't. We don't have them on our yeah, website. So nobody even knows we're selling them yet. We haven't. Yeah, we haven't even let anybody. In, know. Insider information at the web. There we go. So, but I also want to Matt, just <laughs> emphasize the fact that that the machine that's just to the right of Eric there, even though in the picture here it's dark, right? It's kind of a muted look when compared to the or, you know the orange machine on the left. But again, well, our, they so, can all be so, so the one on the left is wrapped. Okay, so that, that that's wrapped by the uh, wrapping company. You can wrap the one on the right tip. That's just that's the black model. People like that because it's black and that's, orange. That's the default of yeah. That's how it just comes. That's with no wrap on it. So I, I kind of like those better. Just I, you know, I like the wrap. I mean, it really does stand out. But uh, these these really, it's I don't know. <laughs> they look they look high tech. They both they, look good. So yeah, yeah, yeah they, they look good without the wrap, and that's why I like them. But you can get you can get our machines yeah. in different colors. You can get them in white. You can get them in blue. So you know, like it, you, you're not limited to just uh, black and yeah. The dark. white the white ones I don't like naked. The white ones I definitely like better wrap. But the black ones, um, a lot most of the time I don't wrap them. I just I just put them. I just put stickers on them so so people understand how to use them and they they, they look just they they really stand depending on the store they really stand out and look good. So they don't need wrap. The white <laughs> ones, I mean, they look good, but. I don't know. The wrap just makes those look that much better. So, yeah. Okay. So a couple more questions before, before we get to the end here. One says, uh, since we'll be buying Bitcoin frequently, which exchanges are known for lower fees? So <laughs> none. Wait, wait. none. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, like what, what, what we can say is uh, what exchanges uh do you not want to do business with uh, Coinbase? Coinbase is not friendly with uh, Bitcoin ATM operators. They don't like anybody that resells Bitcoin. So you can honestly, just honestly, you don't care about, the, and you don't care about the, the the fees on the exchange here. You're talking about charging seventeen percent, and you're going to worry about a half a point versus a quarter point versus you, you just. I, I don't even know anymore. Um, yeah, like Gemini mean, is not. I think people complain about Gemini all the time, but after you use them for a while, they lower your tiers. Binance uh, US does the same thing ftx.us um you know right. bitstamp used to be good a lot of people still have that account although they've kind of been come unfriendly towards bitcoin atm companies um so you pretty much use whoever you want but okay the, Craig. the fees are it, most of them do have like a, a tiered structure the more transactions you do will lower the fee but at the end of the, the, the day it's all factored in it's 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 peanuts so okay okay that. um let's see now um one of the questions is, what's the co total cost to start up, including installation? That's difficult to to, ball, to ballpark, but you know, give it a whirl. That that completely it, that varies. <laughs> so I mean, like, like you're going, you're looking at, uh, you're looking at our phones are ringing off the hook. That's what you're looking at. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you're looking at sixty five hundred dollars for the machine. Uh, if you get the top screen, that's an additional uh, three hundred dollars. So that's uh, sixty eight hundred dollars. Um, if you get the S and G locks, they're three forty. Um, so that's per machine. Then you're looking at your compliance costs. Uh, if you go with BTM compliance, they'll get you your compliance program, which is customized, specified for your business. They will get you your MSB with uh, red register with FinCEN, and they do that for a one time flat fee of two thousand dollars. So that's initial startup. So, you know, just to, just to start up, you're going to have some compliance costs, but then you're going to have uh, maintaining your compliance. And they charge $150 a month per machine. They use blockchain forensic software. They monitor transactions, uh, clear flags in the system. If you see something suspicious, you tell them. They, rep they uh, report suspicious activity reports. 
If if um, they see something suspicious, they'll, they'll file suspicious factory reports with FinCEN. They file currency transaction reports with uh, uh, for customers that are you know, buying over ten thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. They, they retain all that data, so they, they and they store it for you. Um, so they and, and that's one hundred fifty dollars a month per machine. So how many machines are you going to have? You know, so that's what it really boils down to. Um, the startup cost depends on how many machines you're going to have. Um, same thing with return on your investment. Depends on how many machines you're going to have. The more machines you have, the the quicker your return on your investment can be. But, so, but actually, the cost the cost of the machine is actually not your biggest cost, right? So, so none of these things that he just mentioned are going to be your biggest cost. Your biggest cost is actually what, what we call the float, and that's the money, amount of money in Bitcoin and cash that you're going to have laying out at any point in time uh, in the machine. So when somebody comes up to the machine, they put $20 in the machine. You have to have that Bitcoin. You send them the Bitcoin. Your cash is sitting in the machine. That builds up. You got to empty that out. And that whole cycle takes a period of time. That is probably, um, that's going to take more of your cash. So you could get somebody to come in and do a $5,000, $10,000 order. You got to have that plus whatever else you have for, for your next customer. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's very... Uh, variable there. Um, the more obviously, the better. Okay. Um, one of one my, one final question is: Which machine is the most popular of the ones that you have shown us? I I, I would say the so the one screen and the two screen were like 50 50 this year. It was it was literally right down the middle. Um, it, it like for for some time we actually thought, oh, well, the two screens are the most popular, and then all of a sudden the, they went back one screen. Now it's two screens again. It's about so we sold about just as many of both. So sometimes okay. I think it was based on inventory what we had in stock because uh, a lot of times we have it and they're like they wanted the other one. I'm like, oh, one excuse those. me, sorry guys. Okay. <laughs> well, so oh, then another question was, yeah. uh, the machines are, are there's there are all two way machines, right? So what is what is what is a two way machine? What does that mean? Right. I mean that's buy and that sell. That means right? you can buy and sell, but yeah, buy and sell, right? Okay. Um, there, there's some cheap models out there that are that are just that are just one way machines. So like so a lot of operators buy like the rights machine, which is, is is a cheaper model, but they're one way machines. Um they put them out there and they don't see the volume and then they're they're always surprised to hear how much volume everyone else is doing. And they're like, Well, yeah, you, you have a one way machine and, and they don't understand like it, it makes a big difference. Um and, and so we we did have one way machines at one point in time. We swapped them all out and what a difference it made and we'll, we'll the volume, the volume goes up because people it's, have the, more. The trust. price difference is marginal, so don't bother. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, any closing thoughts, guys? Um, um, you know, again, back on the marketing side, uh, you know, Tyler's asking how effective are Google ads. They're, they're effective, um, but I think your 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 raw like Google SEO, like getting people uh, to to you know not paying for the ads. But, but actually being represented on Google and having articles, getting your local newspaper to come do an article. Story, you know, I have a story here from the local paper. You get stuff like that going. Uh, people learn who you are, especially if you're not in a large town. Um, you know, and then you have your repeat customers and treat them well and, and communicate with them. Figure out how to get a, a list, figure out how to communicate with them. And, uh, you know, SMS messaging. There's, there's so many different ways to reach out to your customers and support them, but, you know, just as important as marketing is customer service. If you're not doing customer service and if you're not helping people get on board and into Bitcoin, then you're not, you're missing what, what you're doing here, which is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bitcoin. All right. Well, Hey, well, um, great stuff guys. Um, if people have questions, I want to end a webinar with, you know, if, if you want to e email questions or info at chainbytes.com. Um, you also have uh, our website, chainbytes.com where you can you know, click the contact link there or um, there's a link to buy bitcoin atm if you click that link it gives you a sign up form to just to be contacted by one of the the sales staff uh, and then and they're there to help answer any questions and uh, uh no, there's no questions you know not important so anything you can pick yes, up where you're yeah you can access on on twitter on the website there's actually a chat you can just ask questions if you want with somebody somebody will always respond to you and either you know get back to you with with the answer right away most, most of the questions can be answered right away or uh Unless I'm a, unless I'm in a webinar, I'll always answer unless I'm in a webinar. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you, right, always, well, you always see Keith going off. He's like, we're, we're in meetings together. He's like, hold on a second. He's, he's answering somebody on the on the website, and I'm like, yeah. So so, it's, but we're happy to do it. I mean, it, it's cool. Uh, it's definitely check, cool out our, to... check out our YouTube. Channel. We've got a lot of content on our YouTube channel. Um, we've had other webinars, so follow up with that. We have you know uh, 
about our Bitcoin ATMs and compliance, and it goes in pretty depth. So, you know, check out, you know, you can see how our actual machines work. And uh, yes, uh, so the entire sales team is here to answer any question that you have. Um, we give dedicated consultation phone calls so we can explain to you everything you need to know about the Bitcoin ATM business. Yeah, it was, that was actually when somebody asked the question earlier, what, what, what differentiates you from other companies? Yeah, seriously, really, really one of the things is the support. I mean, the, the people at the company, Chainbytes, really get back to people. It's very high priority. So. Well, and I was just going to say, let, let us know what other things we can talk about to help um, operators who are either looking to get into the space or in the space, trying to figure out, you know, how to make more money. Uh, we, you know, we definitely get to see all the operators, how they operate and, and, and everything like that. So we, we get to learn lessons from people who are successful and why. And, and so, um, you know, talking about some of these marketing tactics is, is definitely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go oh, ahead. Clay, anything else, Keith, add? I was just going to say, you know, like our, our sales team, we like to support our customers. So we're, we're here because of it, you know, like you, you're successful, you come to buy more machine. <laughs> so we want, yeah. we want to see you successful. Okay. All right. Great. Well, Hey, thank you very much guys for, for doing this today and uh, look forward to, to the next, to the next webinar. Um, and until then take care and we'll, we'll, we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Thanks. All everybody. right. See ya.